Not now? How about now? How about now? How about if I push that button? Like back to it. <laughs> <laughs> and the church said amen. amen. Listen, some of you may have heard about me. I don't believe it. <laughs> Let me, just for the sake of time and everything else, I've got a few things here I need to check off. My favorite verse. Proverbs 17, 22, to look at it when you get home. Amen. But I didn't, I didn't bring all that graphic stuff because I like to make people work. Hope you brought your Bible. Amen. 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 My favorite verse is Proverbs 17, 22. You know what that says? Laughter maketh the heart merry like medicine. Y'all ain't laughing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, next thing is, uh, I, I don't know if this is a PC church or not. You know, politically correct, <laughs> or are you positively with Christ? <laughs> if you haven't guessed by now, I'm a black guy. <laughs> I knew that was a good one. That's a good one. I'm actually a Lumbee Indian black guy, amen? Born in Philadelphia almost 60 years ago uh, to a mother who was married to a soldier who had a son, and she went down to the country in Carolina and hooked up with an Indian boy, and voila. <laughs> I'm a pro-life speaker nationally. I work with Dr. Alberta King, Glenard Childers, I spoke to Walk for Life this year, and my ministry is men, post abortive fathers. I'm a post aborted father. I have no biological heirs because in 1977 and 76, my girlfriend went to Planned Parenthood in Monterey, California, where I grew up, and severed my bloodline. I didn't know what was going on there, and I was in college playing football. She told me she was pregnant the first time after she had the first abortion. She had another one. I couldn't fight, didn't know to fight. I mean, it was that time when, you know, most fellas was like, well, man, this, you know, I can't have no baby right now. I'm going to the NFL. I did go, by the way, for 18 days. <laughs> I got cut by the Los Angeles Raiders, amen? Right, I've been a Raider fan since 1967. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> I did actually get a chance for 18 days. I was always one. church planner. I'm a Southern Baptist church planner, and I'm on the executive board for Central Valley Baptist Association. Amen? Amen. We're all part of it. Amen? I'm a good Baptist, but I got a little costal root in me. Amen? <laughs> okay, and I want you to know, in 1968, I was a member of a youth choir in Seaside, California, called the Victory Temple Church of God in Christ Trumpeteers. We didn't have a youth choir at our church yet. We formed one that next year. But we, in 1968, we went up to Oakland, California, to a recording session for a song that you probably might know. Uh, it was released as a 45 under the title of the North California State Youth Choir of the Church of God in Christ. And that song was Oh Happy Day. I was a member of that original choir, amen? So I've been singing for a little while, amen? And then they, then they re-released it after it became hits and became the Edward Hawkins Singers, amen? That's a little history for you. I'll write that down. We'll check it up later. You won't find my name, but I was there. Amen. <laughs> Grew up in Monterey, California. After parents uh, came to the to the Monterey Peninsula, my dad was in the United States Navy, thirty years, and we came. And, amen. Amen. Navy man. Hallelujah. And uh, 
graduated from high school, played football with Herman Edwards, Herb Lust, and all that crew. My brother, my pastor, Pastor Herb Lust, is the pastor of the Greater Exodus Baptist Church in Philadelphia. And Herb has built a great ministry over 32 years. But if you go Google the frame tailback, you will see that my brother, my best friend, my pastor's son, is the first NFL player to kneel in the end zone and pray back in 1977. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen. And he was actually the first back in college at Long Beach State. And he, he, he told us in 1973, he was going to go to the NFL in the locker room at Monterey Central College. We didn't understand prophecy. He said, I'm going to go to the NFL, play three years, and quit and preach. And we were like, yeah, right. He did that. In his fourth year, he signed his most lucrative contract for $175,000, and he told Dick Vermeil and Reggie White, who was a pastor, he said, I'm going to quit because I, I told God I was going to do that. And we told him, no, man, just get started, man. You gotta, come on, man. I want to go to the games. I want to, you know, <laughs> selfish reasons, like that. But he quit. 32 years later, Greater Exodus Baptist Church, one of the most powerful ministries in the city of Philadelphia, my brother Herb built the first pregnancy center in the city of Philadelphia out of 218 abortion clinics. He has preached all around the world. We have ministries in Africa where we killed 20 wells, four orphanages, and two mealy plants under an initiative started by President George Bush who gave him $40 million to help deal with AIDS in Africa. He is one of the 30 pastors that God used to write the Faith Nation initiatives. Amen? Amen. So, that's a little bit about me. DJ, college, on the road with a major star, graduated with a degree in.